Dear colleagues, we are facing today a significant challenge. We are facing a challenge in which we have 680 million people living undernourished, 2 billion people that don't have access to regular food, and 3 billion people that don't have access to healthy diets. Within this context, the digital agriculture and the digital transformation of the agri-food system could create a big change. I'm going to present today what we believe are the opportunities and the challenges of the digital, of digital agriculture to be able to achieve the transformation. Let me, let me share with you my PowerPoint, please. So the presentation today will focus on what are the, the innovations that we have to face. But first, it's important to understand that digitalization of agriculture uh, will bring uh, revolutionized agriculture. Digital technologies can also address multiple micro market failures, and they can also improve connectivity. Uh, but we need to understand that there is today a digital gap. First of all, if we look at the digital realities, access to internet, 87% is in developed countries and 47% in developing countries. There is a digital gender gap. The network coverage is not equal and the mobile subscription, has, despite it has accelerated enormously, it has not yet achieved universal access. And what are the key barriers? Lack of electricity, especially in rural areas. 15% of the world population is without electricity. Literacy, very important capabilities, 30% incapable of basic reading and writing. Lack of ICT skills. Affordability is very significant cost of access to broadband technologies. Local content not necessarily is appealing to the farmers and poor network coverages across. The percentage of the population not using the internet in 2019 shows that the major problem in this map, the dark red areas are mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa and in some parts of Asia. With this telling us that there is a significant amount of the population which is offline today of access to internet and therefore that broadens the digital gap. But what are the major things that digital agriculture brings to us? It brings more information and that helps to reduce information asymmetry. It brings information uh, on, on, on establishing uh, financial access. And that's what could bring better access to financial markets. It allows us to have lower search and transaction costs. And for example, it will allow us to improve e-commerce and also allow us to search and track and to verif verify the cost and the attributes of the products. And that could be something very useful, especially for trading. So on information asymmetries, we know prices have been the major core uh, mechanism in which farmers will receive prices through SMS or through other mechanisms that will allow them to make optimal decisions. This has happened in Peru, in Niger, in South Asia. Again, the major concern there was the quality of the information. And we have learned that we have to provide proper prices information that are relevant for the farmers. We also know that mobile phones has helped to create mobile money and PESA in Kenya is one of the best exercises. So again, helping to access to financial systems and has contributed to lifting 2% of Kenyans out of poverty and especially females. We also know that e-commerce has improved like the case of Esoko in Africa, which reported 10 to 11% rise in revenues due to the better information and improved bargaining. And finally, blockchains based applications has become very important in, in having this layer of tracking the produce. Walmart reduced tracing time of pre-packaged uh, mangoes from seven to 2.2 seconds, seven days to 2.2 seconds. That's a huge change. That's a huge change that we need to look carefully. But what needs to be done? What are the basic conditions that needs to be met? First, on soft infrastructure, it needs to be inclusive. We need to have the human capital and empowerment that have digital literacy to be able to supply the labor demand that is needed. We need to have the complements, the regulatory framework of standards and interoperability that will allow to have a competitive market. We need to have innovative and effective PPP mechanisms to finance this. On the hard infrastructure, we need digital and physical infrastructure, roads, electricity, storage. I cannot have e-commerce if I don't have the transportation. We need to have internet coverage, mobile and smartphones available. We need to improve connectivity to networks. And we need to have data to have the information that is required. All these are requirements that need to be put in place, both in soft infrastructure and in hard infrastructure. And this graph tries to summarize this. If we have digital technologies and the revolution with complements, we will face innovation, efficiency, and inclusion. But if we don't have these complements, this institutionality, we will face concentration of market power, inequalities, no inclusion, and control. And that's what we want to avoid and what we need to avoid. There are key principles of digital road transformation, capacity development, capability, content, and that the context matters. And it has to be simple, it has to be sustainable, and it has to be in a system approach, integrated, holistic approach across the disciplines of the sector. So capacity, content, context, 
simple, sustainable, and in a system approach. This is how we would like to have the future of farms, but we need to be realistic. This could be happening in the large farms, where you will have survey by drones, fleet agri robots, farming by data, texting to cows, smart tractors. This could happen in small farms, but we need to have a revolution. We need to re re revolutionize the way this is being done. Because at the end of the line, the farmers that you want to be cost effective are the small farmers. They are the ones that have the biggest budget constraint. And that's what we are looking for, and that's what we need to achieve. So it's very important that we start thinking how to adapt these technologies to small farmers. Some examples, digital technologies and access to information, ESOCO, information on market prices, operates in 10 countries in Africa and connects over a million farmers to essential services, 10 to 11% rise in farmers' revenues. Each of all in India, kiosks with internet access, information on farming practices, prices, weather and farming sir, advice, soybean prices increase between 1% to 3%, 90% increase in soy production, 33% in farmers' net profits. Good options to assess them, to evaluate them and see how we can scale them up. Also, we can improve access to markets. The Taoboa Villages, an e-commerce platform in the Public People's Republic of China, a public-private partnership, eliminates a significant barrier to of entry, customers' access, positive income and social outcomes, and 3,000 Taoba villages have annual online sales over $1 million. Now, to be able to have these e-commerce facilities, we need to have four elements in place. We need to have connectivity, of course, the platform, the content, of course, but we also need to be able to move the produce. And that's the transportation part, the mailing system. If those four complements are not there, which they are in the Taoba, Taoba villages, it won't work. So we need to prepare to have all those four elements in place to assure that e-commerce platforms will work, especially now after what we have seen with the COVID-19. To access to financial markets, this is central. Today, many of our small farmers don't have access to financial markets, and that's creating a problem because when they need to wait for to sell, they don't have liquidity and they cannot start a new planting season. M-Pesa is a huge ex experience in Kenya where mobile phone-based systems used for money, transfer, savings, and payments. It increased market participation by 37% in Kenya, and it helped lift 2% of Kenyans out of poverty. In Tula, access to, the, to, to credit for inputs, 9,000 farmers in Ghana and Kenya in 2018, and facilitated facilitate over 1 million in orders, dollars in, in orders. So again, having digital technologies that assure, for example, innovative scoring mechanisms so that banks can be more assured that they can lend to these farmers could help enormously. Mobile money by itself helps enormously also through be able to do e-commerce, and that's what Africa has an advantage. So we need to find solutions for this. Insurance is another option. Farmers face every day the risk of the weather, and we need to have insurance in place. And the Acre offers three weather index-based index products, and there are many other options in Ethiopia, in Bangladesh, showing how index insurance could be an option and digital technologies could enormously help. FAO is working in having a portfolio of tools, like for example, weather conditions. We can give real-time weather conditions to farmers so that they understand what is going on, but also we can link this to insurance mechanism to lower the cost of the reinsurance companies. The distributed layer technologies, this is blockchains. It's a decentralized consensus-based record, record keeping system, an innovation that will have significant impact on agri-food value chains. Why is this? Because the digital layer technologies will improve efficiency. Blockchain can significantly improve information and efficiency. Covantis, for example, is an initiative to develop a blockchain-based prototype for international bulk agricultural commodity trading. Also, we are using it in financial services. Blockchains can foster smallholder farmers' access to financial services. Banku is a company applying blockchain technologies to build transaction records. Records are proof of transactions and income and access formal financial services. And that will reduce the risk and therefore will give more comfort to the banks to lend to smallholders. Also for traceability, and this is central for trade, Walmart and IBM run a pilot on, on Walmart, Mango and pork value chains. Time needed to trace the origin of a pre-packaged portion of a mangoes fell from nearly seven days to 2.2 seconds. This is amazing. The challenge and the change that you can achieve is amazing. And this could be central for food safety issues. DLT and food fraud. Blockchains can help fight food fraud. Quill Trace is a blockchain-based procurement solution to curb fraud in the trade of saffron. It tracks saffron throughout the value chain, increased transparency, and also impossible to inflate volumes. So again, many mechanisms that we can use to reduce information asymmetry and to reduce transaction costs in the world. And also to assure sustainability. Blockchain can foster sustainability, like for example, in the tuna fish industry, which is a high value commodity, is extensive international trade, 
highly migratory species with, with standing distributions and 43% of the global stock fixing to overfishing. The WWF blockchain pilot on Fiji's tuna fishing sector has tried to track this to assure that these farmers will have sustainable production because tuna fish cannot be destroyed. So we need to find a solution that is sustainable. Now, there are barriers to adoption of these technologies, the complexity of these digital ledgers technologies. It requires huge computer capacity, electricity needs, and challenges specific to developing countries. So we need to overcome those barriers and find ways in which the developing countries can benefit from these technologies. So what are the benefits? Reduce transaction costs, as we mentioned, increase efficiency, force sustainable development, and foster inclusion. But the risk, economies of scale, labor, data collection, privacy, exclusion from the digital economy, very important, collusion, regulatory gaps, and market power. Those are the things that we need to be careful, and we need to know them in advance so that we can set up the complements that are required to avoid this problem. So we need to improve the digital governance, and we need to have a transformation to improve the digital governance. So in 2019, the Global Forum for Food and Agriculture recognized the potential of digitalization to achieve SDG2. And FAO is, has developed what we call the International Platform for Digital Food and Agriculture. This is where we see a governance mechanism, an international governance mechanism that will allow us to bring best practices so that we can leapfrog, developing countries can leapfrog and not assume the cost of the errors in the past. We can commit new errors, but we need to leapfrog uh, and avoid and minimize those errors. FAO also has developed a, the digital service portfolio, which is trying to bring information and advisory messages to farmers on extension services, on information on climate, on our geospatial information. So it is working in Rwanda right now, in Senegal, Egypt, and Tanzania, and we hope to scale this up to all our hand-in-hand -hand country initiatives. Let me finish by thanking you and by saying that digital technologies are not a panacea by themselves. It could be a panacea, but to be able to achieve that, we need to have cost of access should be reduced so that we reduce the digital divide. We need to have proper content so that farmers get what they need. We need to have proper capabilities in place and we need to have the governance, what we call the complements. So those four C's are a requirement for us to be able to achieve what is needed in digital technologies. If not, we're not going to use them properly and we're not going to achieve what we want. What we want is a digital transformation because we need an agri-food system transformation. I already have said, we have 690 million people undernourished, 2 billion people that don't have access to regular food, and 3 billion people that cannot access to healthy diets. This is all before COVID-19. COVID-19 will increase in 132 more million people in undernourished. So this is the time, this is the opportunity. We need to make the change, and digital technologies can play that role by taking into account those forces, cost of access, content, capabilities and the content and the complements. Thank you very much.